Chapter 5, Levels. This chapter focuses on leveling functionality in MicroStation, which is comprised of the following. Setting the active level, level libraries, bi-level names, bi-level symbology, level filters, level display, and level manager. A MicroStation design is made with basic building blocks called elements that are placed on a design plane within each model. Each element placed in a model is on a drawing level. Levels are analogous to transparent overlays which can be combined in different ways to visualize different parts of a model. When creating a MicroStation design, the user can use many levels to organize drawing information intelligently. Each level can have its own color, style, and weight symbology, along with a number of other attributes. MicroStation has a limit of 4 billion levels that can be created and used in a drawing. Obviously, using such a high number of levels is impractical at best. FDOT has adopted a bi-level system utilizing FDOT standard level libraries that define discipline-specific levels and associated color, style, and weight symbology for the production of all FDOT projects. These FDOT standard level libraries are locked and cannot be modified by the user. MicroStation provides for the management and display options for levels through Level Manager, Level Filters, and Level Display applications. FDOT has utilized these options in the setup of their CAD standards as discussed in the following sections. Setting the active level. While a MicroStation design file has many levels available to the user, only one level is open for modification at any given time. This open level is referred to as the active level. All elements are created on the active level. It is important to change the active level to the desired level before placing elements. The level an element resides on may be changed later, but the best practice is to create it on the desired level to start with. The active level is the same in all views. The following are ways to set the active level. The easiest way to set the active level is to click the Active Level Combo box on the Attributes toolbox. Click the Active Level Combo box to display available levels. Choose the desired level to be set as the active level. From the Level Display dialog, the user can also set the active level. The level display is accessed from the primary toolbar. You'll note the active level is highlighted. The active level can be set by double-clicking on a level or by right-clicking on a level and selecting Set Active from the context menu. From the Level Manager dialog, the user can also set the active level. The user can double-click the active level box in the MicroStation status bar to open the Level Manager and then double-click any level to set the active level. You'll notice the active level is now highlighted. Level Manager can also be accessed from the Primary Tools bar or from the Settings menu, Levels, Level Manager, or Level Display. Level Libraries. A MicroStation level library refers to a component of a DGN library that contains a level structure, that is, one or more level definitions. New level libraries can be created and new and existing level libraries can be attached, detached, imported, and exported using the Level Manager dialog. A level definition does not technically attach from the level library to a design file until it is used. As outlined in the CAD manual, FDOT defines CAD level symbology standards using design libraries, color tables, line style resource files, line weights, and toolboxes. FDOT has created standard FDOT-DGN libraries, or DGN libs, within MicroStation to store FDOT standards for cells, levels, level filters, line styles, multi-line styles, text styles, dimension styles, element templates, menu customizations, customized tools, toolboxes, and tasks. Each FDOT-DGN lib contains data that is shared throughout the files and among users. When a design file is opened in the FDOT workspace in MicroStation, the corresponding FDOT standards level libraries are automatically attached with preset FDOT standard filters activated. Only the valid levels for the attached libraries associated with the specific active design file are displayed for use. These DGN libs are located in the F.SS4 folder under resources DGN libs levels.
This folder would be located on the server for an f.server installation and located on the local machine for a standalone workstation. By level names, each f.standard defined in the design library, DGNLib, is identified by a unique level name. When used from a DGNLive, it is copied into the active design file and it is given the same name. This allows for comparison of the local resource to the f.dgnlive resource for compliancy to the f.cad standards. By level symbology. The standard f.level libraries define the CAD levels for each discipline with the associated bi-level color, bi-level line style, and bi-level line weight symbology. Designers are to use these standard f.levels to assign each element within f.cad design files. The f.levels and symbology are grouped and translated into specific rule files which are associated to each valid standard file name of each discipline for the purpose of performing the quality control check for f.standard compliancy of design files. Complete specifications can be found in the CAD manual. When using MicroStation to create an f.drawing, the color, line style, and line weight attributes should be set to by level. This setting allows the level to control the active attributes. This ensures that the levels comply with f.standards. f.levels are predefined and delivered in specific DGN Lib files. F. does not recommend overriding the by level settings. To do so would create non standard design files that would not be acceptable in f.project submittals. MicroStation levels can be filtered at any time to make only specific levels within a level library available during the design process. F. utilizes the MicroStation level filters to combine level definitions within the f.level libraries into filter groups. F. create a filter group called standards that match the f.standard rule files. Each standard subfilter is associated with an f.standard file name. When a design file with an f.standard file name is opened in MicroStation, only the f.levels approved for use in that design file are displayed for selection. These filter groups are not locked down and can be turned off at any time. The user also may create filters specific to their needs. These are the level filters. As you can see, standards, and each of these level filters corresponds to a standard file name. The f.standard level filter groups, as you've seen, can be accessed from two locations. The first being the level manager, also from the active level filter drop down on the attributes toolbar. If non standard levels have been used within the active design file, the filters will omit these levels from display. The filters must be turned off to reveal all levels used within the active design file. From the level manager by selecting the level filter icon or from the models, levels, and filters list pane as discussed further in the next section. Level manager. MicroStation level manager is used to control level display and level symbology for the open DGN DWG file and attached references. By default, the level manager includes a list of models, levels, and filters on the left and a detail section of levels on the right. Multiple design files and or reference file attachments can be selected from the tree by holding the left mouse button down and dragging the cursor over the desired files. The levels for all of these selected files display in the level list. As previously stated, FDOT has established and delivers standard CAD symbology levels within a set of DGN Libs. FDOT's workspace disables the level manager's modification creation functions of levels and does not allow users to create, delete, import, or export levels to ensure consistency in the products submitted for FDOT projects. Every level needed for creating f.drawings drawings should already exist, including miscellaneous levels for scratch drawing. If a new level is desired, a request must be submitted to be addressed through the CAD Technical Advisory Committee of the appropriate discipline. The level manager is accessed by selecting the level manager icon from the primary toolbar or from the settings menu, levels, level manager. Here's a brief tour of the MicroStation Power Geopack level manager. These are the f.standard file names. This is the, the level library in which they exist. By level color, line style, and line weight. You can organize these levels by clicking on the column headings. 
This is the list of filters. These are the standard F dot filters. This is the filter list as well, showing the active filter. And this dropdown allows you to toggle between bi-level symbology and override symbology. You'll notice that there's no bi-level symbology set under the overrides. We'll talk more about that later. A few other features of the uh, MicroStation Level Manager. If you right-click on any of these levels, it's going to give you a context pop-up menu. You can select to set active, the level that you selected, uh, jump to active level, update levels, and that's going to update them from the level library itself if things have changed. Um, select all, select none, invert selection just like the level display tool. And of course, you can select the properties option. The properties option is going to bring up the level properties dialog. Uh, you should not be able to edit these levels. In fact, you cannot edit these levels. They are set by F dot. However, you can change the level symbology overrides. We're going to talk about that next. But of course, we do not recommend changing the level symbology overrides. Uh, you shouldn't have to change the standards for any reason. Um, but of course, there's always exceptions. So potentially there's a reason to set those symbology overrides. So we are going to talk about them and I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. But a symbology override is another control that can be assigned to a level allowing you to override the f dot by level symbology for that level. Once the override is set in the level, the user can select the symbology dropdown and set overrides to display those levels with an override setting. Again, note overrides are not recommended by f dot. To set overrides in a level in the level manager, select the menu option level properties or right click on any level and select properties from the pop-up menu like I just showed you. The properties dialog opens and you can review and change the override symbology in the uh, bottom portion of the level properties dialog. Of course that is here. Now, uh, multiple target files can be selected by a user to allow ap application of override symbology on sp uh, specified levels existing in multiple files. For example, several files have a level called border and elements on that level appear as a different color in each file. The color symbology can be changed once so the color is changed in all of the selected files. So in other words, it can affect multiple files. But, of course, um, once you set those symbology overrides, you'll need to enable level overrides in the view attributes dialog. This gives you an, another uh, control on being able to toggle on and off those level overrides. So without level overrides checked, everything appears with normal symbology. And with the overrides checked, everything appears with the override symbology. Of course, I have not set any overrides, so you see my symbology looks exactly the same, regardless of whether I have the level overrides toggled on or off. I'm going to toggle those off because we will be doing an exercise a little later with those uh, overrides. Let's talk about the level display dialog. Uh, MicroStation gives the user a great advantage by allowing them the ability to control the level display. The level display dialog provides for this action to turn on and turn off levels in a model and to apply filters created in the level manager dialog. This dialog can be accessed through the MicroStation menu option, Settings, Level, Display. It's right there. Alternatively, you can access the level display from the Primary Tools toolbar. You can open up a quick dialog or open the dialog itself. Just like all of the dialogs, this one can be docked to the top, bottom, left, or right. I'm just going to go ahead and go over a really, really quick view of this, uh, this dialog. These are the levels that are passing the current active level filter for this file. These are the levels that are available to be drawn on. If there's a dot to the right of it, that means there's something already drawn on that level. You can turn levels off by clicking on them. 
or by dragging the mouse to turn them off. Turn them back on the same way. You can double click on a level to make it the active level. You see now that's the active level. I've double clicked on it. Okay. You can turn all levels off and all levels on. Now why are you still seeing elements on my screen if I turn all levels off? There's two reasons. One is that of course it's never going to turn off the active level. The other reason is because I have files referenced in that you're seeing showing through the file that I'm working on. And we're going to talk about reference files much later on in this course. So that's how you turn levels off and on. Just like the level manager, you do have the right click context pop up menu so that you can select to set an active level, jump to that level, create a display set. Again, like I just did, turn on all or turn off all. And you can invert the selection. So say I have a few levels turned off and I want to turn all of those on and turn everything else off. Invert on off does exactly that. Okay. Uh, you can save a filter. And then, of course, you can access Level Manager directly from the Level Display tool. There's an option for selecting your filter. And you'll notice this lists all of the files that are referenced into my file. I'm currently in DSGN RDO1, and these are my reference files. You can look at the levels that are on these. You notice that with these, there's not anything passing the level filter because I have it set for. DSGN RDO1, so I can go ahead and hit no, and now you see these are the levels. Of course, this, this reference file is off, but you'll see these are the levels in those reference files. So it gives you control over being able to turn levels off and on. There's a number of other ways to turn levels off and on. So if you want to turn off levels so you're not seeing certain elements so that you can work in a certain area without other elements getting in the way that are unrelated, you can do that. Uh, that's basically the reason why you'd be turning on and off levels. You can, of course, sort these levels by name or by whether they're used. I like to sort it by whether they're used because that makes it easier to find levels that I've already been working on. But your specific workflow may be different than that. There are additional columns that you can select like library, number, description, etc. These correspond to the columns in Level Manager. So it gives you another option to sort levels by certain criteria. That is the Level Display dialog. Working with levels, we're going to talk about changing attributes. One set of tools that works with the levels is the Change Attributes Toolbox. The tools contained in this toolbox can be used to easily move elements from one level to another. They can also be used to match the current attribute setting to an existing element. The Change Attributes Toolbox is accessed by selecting the icon here, Change Element Attributes, and selecting Open Change Attributes as a toolbox. You can also access the same toolbox from right here. So whether it's the main task or the main classic task, um, this does appear in a number of different places. So that's pinned to the top. You can access the Change Attributes Classic Toolbox from right there. So let's talk about the Change Attributes task. The first tool is the Change Attributes tool. This works sort of like the Attributes toolbar right here. In fact, one of the options is to use active attributes. It'll go ahead and pull the active attributes from your attributes toolbar right here into the dialog if you check that box. If you turn it off, it's blank. Now, it's only going to affect the boxes that are checked. So if you're looking to change an element's attributes, let's go ahead and turn off my reference file so I can look at the uh, elements that are actually in my active design file. Oh, look at that. Anything on the default level? Shoulder unpaved, default. Here's something on the default level. So this is shoulder unpaved. So let's make this uh, paved shoulder. So what you do is you access the change attributes dialog. You'd select the level. And I want to go down here to shoulder paved. Okay. And I have just checked the level option. So I'm clicking that there. And you'll notice that it has changed the color, weight, and line style 
of my line, even though all I had checked was the level. And that's because the level is set to automatically change the by level settings. The color weight and line style are associated by level to the shoulder paved level. So when you change something just to the shoulder paved level, level or really any level actually, <laughs> when you change anything to a certain level, it's going to change the color weight and line style of that line. But you'll notice there's other options like transparency. You can change the transparency of a level, priority of the level to class, whether it's primary or construction. We talked about that briefly. Primary elements are elements that will print and elements that represent things. Construction elements are elements that you draw to uh, possibly refer to, snap to, or use in the design process that are not actual things in your design. Um, you can also set it to make a copy so that when you change the attributes it makes a copy of that element so there's two elements then. And then there's a change entire element option. It's a pretty straightforward tool. The only other thing to note is there's a little eyedropper here so that you can that, that proves nothing that I clicked on the same line I've been working on. Uh, so you can click on an element and match the attributes. It's the match attributes icon. Okay, The little uh, eyedropper. It's very similar to the eyedropper you'd find in like Photoshop or some other graphic design program where you're selecting an option and getting the attributes off of it. There you are. So then of course you can take your eyedropper and make other elements match that just by using the little eyedropper. I'm going to undo that because I don't want everything on the paved shoulder level there. That's the element at change element attributes tool. There's the change to active area tool which is used to change the area attribute of closed elements such as shapes, ellipses, complex shapes or b-spline curves to the active area, solid or whole. So when you're making a solid object or a filled object you have the option of whether it's a filled object, a solid object, or whether it's a whole. And what will eventually happen, and we'll, we'll show this later on in the course, is you would use the whole element to uh, group together with the solid element to punch a hole in that element. And say you've designed a solid element, but it actually needs to be a hole. This tool is used to toggle that. So you can make it solid or whole. So if it's a hole, it needs to be solid. You can make it solid. If it's solid and it needs to be a hole, you can do it that way. So that's what this tool does. Oddly specific tool, only does one thing. Change element fill type is used to change a closed element fill type, such as a shape, ellipse, etc., to the active fill type. When you're drawing a closed shape, it may be filled or not filled, which is different than being solid or whole. Filled and not filled is depending on whether it's actually filled with a color or just an outline. And this gives you the option to switch from being opaque to being outlined, or none at all. Again, another specific tool. Uh, modify line style attributes is used to interactively modify the line style attributes of an element with a custom line style. The tool setting method determines the type of modification. This allows you to change the start width, end width, scale, dash scale, gap scale, and shift. And this is for lines that have already been drawn with custom line style. So we're not going to really run into anything with the custom line style for this tool during this course, but be aware that sometimes when you're drawing with custom line styles, perhaps utility lines, uh, which have a letter and dashes, dashes and a letter and then more dashes, that maybe you want to shift those letters and those dashes down the line a bit because one letter is too close to the end and it's not aesthetically pleasing, uh, that's where you can, can do this. You can modify the line style using this tool. Change multi-line, we're definitely not going to get into this, but multi-line is a way to draw multiple lines all at once. Um, and this is a tool used for editing those multi-lines. But what we're going to be more concerned about is match element attributes. And this is essentially the same thing as that eyedropper that's on the change element attributes. So if you want to get some element attributes from something and then have that set as your active element attributes, that's how you do that. And then there is smart match. Then there's Smart Match, which is used to change all active element attribute settings, including those specific to particular element types. So they match the attributes of an existing element. For example, when a cell is matched, the active scale factors and active cell attributes are matched. There's more to elements than just the color, weight, line, style, and transparency. In situations with 
line styles and cells, you'll have scale factors and things like that. The smart match is going to match all of those attributes and allow you to then uh, use them. Of course, it can be used with just regular elements as well. But it does get additional information like scaling from cells and line styles. Exercise 5.1 Level Manager Reviewing the Level Manager Open the MicroStation file DSGNRDO1. This file is located in the dataset in the roadway folder DSGNRDO1.DGN. From the Primary Tools toolbox, select the Level Manager icon. The F.CAD software delivery includes an F.workspace with a preset level library that is locked, disallowing the user from creating new levels. Also included are preset MicroStation level filters that are automatically associated to all F.standard files. From the level manager, move the cursor to hover over the file list with the standard icon. Note the standards filter, DSGNRD, that has been automatically associated and displayed. Select the down arrow to open the pop-up list and then scroll to the top and select None. The level list pane updates with all available levels from the level libraries attached to this design file. Not all the levels are embedded into the design file, only the levels used displayed in bold in the level manager. From the levels list, click on the column titled Used to sort all levels used within the design file to the top of the list. The title may have to be toggled twice as the list can be sorted ascending and descending. Right-click the level list and select Jump to the Active Level from the pop-up menu. The level list moves to and highlights the current active level as displayed in the Attributes toolbar. From the Models, Levels, and Filter list pane to the left of the window, expand the Filter section by clicking the plus icon. Note the listing of the preset F.filters and what level library they are drawn from. Expand the Standards F.V8 Levels Parent Filter by clicking the plus icon. All the filters displayed match directly to the F.Standard rules. Select the DSGNRD to display the F.Standard levels allowable for use in the current active design file, DSGNRD01. Close the Level Manager. Setting the Active Level. Continuing with the DSGN RD01 design file, zoom into the Precious Pet Tax Collector's office located near Station 273 plus 00. And yes, that's what it says in the course manual. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn back on all the references that I had turned off. You'll probably still have all of the references on, but for demonstration purposes, I turned off some of these references. So we're looking for the Precious Pets Tax Collector Office, which I can only assume is a business that specializes in both uh, veterinary medicine and uh, taxes. A quick tip for locating things in a design file that I'm going to use throughout this course is to use the Find and Replace Text tool. This is located on the Edit menu, Edit, Find, Replace Text. We know that the area that we're working in is near Station 273. I could certainly search for tax or tax collectors to find this, but I also know the station is 273, so if you have an alignment that has stationing, you can search this way. It's going to zoom us in right here, and sure enough, here's the Precious Pet Tax Collector Office. We're going to go ahead and rotate the view. I'm selecting the Rotate View button at the top of the view window, setting it for two points. And here's a technique we're going to be using throughout this course. 
I'm going to snap one point to the top of the tick mark for 273 and then I'm going to snap another point there and that just rotates the drawing so it's orthogonal to the view. I know I'm going to be doing some drawing in this area and I think this text is going to get out of the way, get in the way. Uh, and I believe that uh, these leader lines will as well. So let's go ahead and turn those levels off. It looks like this is on level text label and this is also on level text label. So let's go ahead and just turn off the text label level. So let's locate that. That did precisely nothing because it's in a reference file. What reference file is that in? That is in the text rd01 reference file. So there's a couple of things we can do. Uh, we haven't talked about reference files just yet, but let's do this. Locate the text rd. We can see text label is still on in that file. Let's turn that off. All right, so we've turned off a level in a reference file. The other way we could have done that is come to the view attributes and turned text off entirely. But I'd like to go ahead and leave that text on and just turn off the text that's getting in the way. From the attributes toolbar located at the top of the application window, select the active level and set it to fence. So let's you can mouse over this and tap F. It's going to take us down here and look there's fence. And then from the task dialog under the drawing task, we're going to locate the place line tool. That's the second one over from the left on the top row. Place line. And we're going to draw two fence lines at the front of the tax collector's office by placing data points at the start, corner, and end as shown right here on screen. You click here, click here, and click here. And do that again. We're not snapping specifically to anything. We're just drawing this freehand. Which is probably something you're not going to be doing a whole lot of, of freehand drawing, but just for this example. Now let's open up the level manager and switch to overrides. We've located the fence level. We're going to set the overrides on the fence level by right clicking on fence and selecting properties. This brings up the properties dialog for the level fence. You can tell that there have been no symbology overrides set, so we're going to go ahead and set some symbology overrides. We're going to set the color to 1. We'll set the style to 4 and set the weight to 5. And you can close the level manager. You'll notice our fence has not changed. It's still displaying the bi-level symbology of that level. But if we go up here to the view attributes dialog and turn on level overrides, you'll see the symbology has changed to the override symbology. So now you've learned how to navigate the level manager, select level filters, turn on and off levels, and set level overrides, and incidentally learn how to use the place line tool.